Shadow of Mordor wasn't the best open world game, it was the only good one. Uh, intro please. Il mio potere. Thanks for the cool comments guys, I appreciate them. Now, let's take a look at the absolute situation of the open world genre. A genre that can't seem to evolve from the Paleozoic era of GTA 3. There's a map, and there are missions on the map. Wow. Some of these games have cool physics, some have fun ways to move around, but the actual open world itself sucks so bad every time. It's never anything more than a minigame, a distraction, a glorified menu. Instead of clicking on the button that starts the next mission, you fucking walk on it. Surely this genre has more to offer. Enter Middle Earth. Shadow of Mordor. Not a perfect game from any point of view, but it finally did something with the open world. It wasn't just the usual missions and collectibles, let's not forget about the collectibles. Mordor had a system. Rookdoog. You know, the nemesis system. There's this hierarchy of orcs and they like to do things of their own accord. They go for hunts and get owned every time, they party hard, they fight each other, all sorts of stuff. And you can interfere with those events one way or the other. This is how you make an open world game. Everyone's so fixated on missions and cutscenes and scripted events. If you're not gonna take advantage of the map, you might as well be making a linear game at that point. Can you imagine selling a game as open world and then making literal tennis and bowling before gang war mechanics? Like, can you picture it? Okay, okay, I've met my rockstar shitting quota, we can get to the actual topic of the video. Shadow of War, the sequel to Shadow of Mordor. Just kidding, a disclaimer first, I don't know anything about Lord of the Rings. I felt like consuming fantasy material only once in my life, and I went with Game of Thrones. <laughs> Whoops! Bend the knee. You turn these red eyes, uh, the eye of Sauron, right, into blue ones. Is that legal? Consequently, I didn't pay much attention to the story, so don't expect... Huh. Hmm. Is she in the books and movies as well? Asking for a friend. Holy shit, this game is 100 gigs. Uh, usually, when a game is this big, it's not because it's actually big, it's because someone on the development team got the job for being the friend of a brother of a cousin. Uncompressed cutscenes, audio, textures, that's what it means. War is an exception, this game is legitimately that fat. This chonker of a game has so much stuff. The maps are pretty big, each with their own theme and stories and separate armies. Then the fortress management, upgrading your pet orcs, preparing for a siege, executing the siege, the jam crafting, the loot shit, which I... Ooh, I, I love loot shit! The multiplayer components and of course the nemesis system on top of it all. Boy. But this is a review, not a fucking grossy release, so the review starts now. Snafu. I went into Shadow of War with the ominous popular opinion that it's more of the same echoing in my head. It's more of the same, bro. Uh, you know Mordor, right? Uh, like that, but uh, more. It's more of the same. And indeed, to mere mortals, these games look very similar. But there are changes that will make a veteran Mordor player's ears perk right up. For example, the critical hits are now random. Hmm, now that's a thinker, but let's go in order. Douche. Mordor's combat is very deterministic. The critical hits are based on your timing and you get a special move exactly every 8 hits. Or 5 if you have the upgrade, but that's broken as fuck, we don't talk about that. You know when you're getting a special move, so you can plan around it. You pick which orcs are gonna help you build the combo and which orcs are gonna receive which special move. It ends up feeling very much like a puzzle. Shadow of War's combat, on the other hand, is very random, and it's mostly because of three changes. First, the orcs have a crazier and more unpredictable arsenal. They can place bear traps everywhere, they can throw grenades that explode into debuff clouds, they can pull you into these inhuman quicktime events, and the Ologs, the new class of orcs, are just chaos personified. Second, you don't know when you're getting a special move anymore. They're not tied to the combo counter, they're tied to this bar, and with the random crits, you're gonna fill it up at different speeds every time. The typical situation is, oh shit, I guess I have a special move now, I'll use it uh, here. 
and third, the Nemesis system moved towards crazier and more unpredictable events. Uh, are you seeing a pattern? Does this mean war is shallower and therefore worse? No, it means it's different, it's going for something else. Peak Mordor gameplay is reaching a huge combo while having managed your special moves optimally. As I said, like a puzzle. Peak War gameplay is attacking one guy, then his buddy shows up, then that guy's buddy shows up, and because they have unseeable, unblockable long-range attacks that one-shot you, plus a pet dragon that shits fire and lasers, you have to call your bodyguard. And uh, his special ability is exploding constantly. <laughs> So amidst the screams and the fire and the poison clouds, your target finally dies to the cursed debuff that somebody placed on him as you do a fucking skateboard trick. That's Shadow of War. And it's quite the experience. Fair odds for you. One against one. Whoops, he meant one against two. Wrong again. It's one against three. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this, I'm calling my bodyguard. Yeah. Oh, your bodyguards will be here in a minute. Just in time to bury your corpse. This is it. Better look out! By the way, if you have a bunch of dominated orcs and you don't know who's bodyguard material, you can make them fight each other in the fight pits. Uh, you don't do anything, you just watch. Uh, sounds boring? Wait until you spend 20 hours on it. Time for a real fight! Another gloak for slaughter! You can even make them fight other players' orcs, and there's a whole ranking system, but I didn't get into that. The sieges are pretty good, not simply because they have tons of ways to prepare for them, but also because you need to prepare for them. You think because you took God score, you can take us? Actually, in general, not just with the sieges, the nerfs to the main character's kit, coupled with the insane amount of bullshit from the enemies, means you have to rely on your own army, on sabotage, on discovering the traits of enemy captains. In this game, full of unforgiving randomness, you really don't want to find out the hard way that a captain has no chance. Or iron will. You will serve me. Get out of my scum, my scum. Or defy death. May the dark flame grant me strength. This is the part where the game simply got better. In the first game you sent orcs to fight other orcs, sure, but you kinda just did it cause it was cool. In war there's an actual gameplay supported purpose. You need to make use of the system or you will die a lot. I like this game, it's a good sequel. It expanded on the good stuff but also deviated and did its own thing. I was not expecting this. It does have problems though. War came out during the dark ages of video games, back when loot boxes and microtransactions were the hottest new thing. The first thing I saw when launching the game was an apology. Ooh, <laughs> yikes. At least these guys had the smart idea of cashing out the good boy points when the gig was up. Mankind Divided still has microtransactions to this day. And that makes four videos where I mentioned that game. Yes, it lives in my head, no it doesn't pay any rent. So, the shop is gone and the loot boxes give you stuff that you can purchase with in-game currency anyways, that's fine. What remains is the loot shit. Loot shit looks complex and deep at first, then you play the game and it turns out to be nothing more than Does this new thing have a bigger number than the thing you're wearing? Yes? Okay, wear it. No? Okay, drop it. I hate this, so much, it's why I dread playing the newer Assassin's Creed. The stories of you slitting a guy's throat and he's fine because he's higher level than you are fucking nightmarish. Thankfully in war the loot shit on damage only affects captains, everyone else still gets killed in one hit from charged headshots or stealth kills. The real problem is with improving Talion. Whoa, hold on, we haven't talked about Talion yet. 
uh, his face got uh, kinda nerfed as well. Do you see it? I missed Neanderthal Talion, man. He looked perfect. Anyways, you can't upgrade his arrow capacity, focus and health anymore. Instead, it's all tied to the loot, which is tied to your level. So that means you have no control over Talion's development. The other curious thing with loot shit is that the devs make the early game and mid game armors look awful to make the end game ones look better. Turns out making 80% of your game's armors look like shit has the shocking and unexpected effect of having 80% of your game's armors look like shit. Uh, that's about it as far as the problems go though, it's just the loot shit taking the spot of the previous rune system which worked perfectly. Talion's face and the game being 100 fucking gigabytes, let's not forget about that. Other than those things, the game's pretty good. So in conclusion, I recommend Shadow of Mordor if you're looking for a simple open world game done right. I recommend Shadow of War if you're looking for a chaotic mosh pit of a combat experience surrounded by all these systems that you grind and manage how you like. Think a JRPG, but western, so... You know, fun. And what have we learned? Never listen to anything people say on the internet. It's always wrong. Except for me, you can listen to me. Uh, speaking of that, if you're a sub, you might have noticed my style changed a little bit with this video. The reason for this change is I'm Italian and used to work as hotel receptionist for a couple years. Uh, Italy, hotels, uh, I've been living on government cash since last year, but uh, it's dried up and I can't find a fucking job So I'm trying to turn this gig into a proper thing, of course Wow, is this dude really opening a patreon when he's got like half a subscriber? Uh, yeah, I need the money. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, you don't have to pay. Just uh, subscribe and hit the thing and we'll see where I get Expect more videos more often uh, the bell, that's what it was, hit the fucking bell!